Good morning, and thank you very much to the organisers for squeezing me in at the last minute. Uh, I know there are a lot of speakers today, uh, so don't worry, I'm going to be super speedy. I'm Robert's niece. Um, my dad, Evelyn, was Robert's twin. And um, some of you here today will know that my dad sadly died uh, last October. This was an event that he was always very, very proud to be associated with, and I'm sure that he's going to be looking down on us today. I used to visit Robert quite regularly in his messy but bright and cheerful flat in North London, and he would always want to talk about politics. And I've been trying to imagine what he would make of our current political mess. And I'm really sorry that he's not around to have that debate with me, um, because I suspect that he would profoundly disagree with my position as a Brexiteer. And I know that we've had a lot of fun knocking our opinions back and forth. And, you know, Robert's style was often to do more listening than talking. And he would usually trot out some of his favorite stock phrases like, I suspect that's more true than untrue or so-and-so is more good than bad. What I think we would agree on is the exasperating extent to which the political turmoil over Brexit is sapping all the time and energy of the government to pursue things that really matter to people in their daily lives. I think he'd be cheered up by a few things that this government has managed to do uh, when it's not tearing itself and each other apart. For example, the presumption of consent in organ donation was something he fought really hard for, and that comes into law next year. And I think he'd be delighted by that. And I, thought, I think he would also be quite interested in the work of our prisons minister, Rory Stewart, because prisons reform was something that he was very interested in. And Rory has taken a very principled stance uh, in his position and, for example, has vowed to resign if violence in prison isn't improved by this autumn. I don't know whether he knows something that we don't about how those statistics are going to look. But I do think, uh, those achievements aside, Robert would be frustrated by how little attention employee ownership is getting. And this organisation is doing wonderful things to make sure it does get the hearing amidst all the noise that we have uh, about everything else at the moment. Employee-owned businesses achieve higher productivity and greater levels of innovation, and they're more resilient to economic turbulence. Really importantly, they also have more engaged and fulfilled and less stressed workforces. Now more than ever, in these incredibly challenging and unstable political and economic times, employee ownership feels really relevant. So when our politicians have finally returned to their senses, and it may be quite some wait, I think there's a huge opportunity here for all of us who believe in the employee ownership business model to present it as part of the process of reshaping our economy for post-Brexit Britain, if we ever get there. Let's seize that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.